From the outside, the new iPad Mini is virtually a carbon copy of the iPad Mini 4, but it's sporting some serious upgrades under the hood. As you probably heard, the fifth generation iPad Mini is basically an iPad Air 3, just in a much more compact form factor. Indeed, the iPad Mini 5 is a powerful tablet that can almost fit in your pocket, but the size or lack thereof can be both a gift and a curse depending on your perspective. Watch our hands-on iPad Mini 5 review for the details. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. Unlike early iPad mini iterations, the smallest tablet in Apple's lineup is no longer its cheapest model. The $399 iPad mini 5 gives Apple an iPad that sits just above the entry level $329 iPad as far as price is concerned. So it's not like Apple decided to produce it merely to cater to the low end of the market. It's the iPad mini's diminutive form factor that makes it such an appealing device. In other words, the small footprint must have moved the sales needle enough for Apple to justify a refresh. If you haven't watched our iPad Air 3 review, I highly recommend that you do so because as you'll see, most of what's stated there also applies to this iPad Mini 5 review. That said, there are some differences between the two. Released at the same time as the new iPad Air 3, the iPad Mini 5 shares nearly all the features of its larger sibling. This means that the iPad Mini 5 is just as powerful as the iPad Air 3 from a performance perspective. In fact, both tablets share the same A12 Bionic chip with neural engine the same amount of RAM, 3 gigabytes, the same cameras, and the same display technology. And just like the recent iPad Air refresh, the iPad mini gains Apple Pencil support for the very first time. That means that you can use your iPad mini to take notes or explore your artistic side with pressure sensitivity and tilt support in tow. And if you aren't artistically inclined but still need a stylus to take notes, the iPad mini 5 includes support for the Logitech Crayon as well. Logitech Stylus is a more price-friendly offering that that features Apple Pencil technology, but omits support for pressure sensitivity that digital artists need. The 2019 iPad mini features the exact same dimensions as its predecessor, including a 7.9 inch display with 2048 by 1536 resolution. With its new refreshed internals, it's just slightly heavier than the previous generation release. Outside of size, one of the biggest differences between the mini 5 and the Air 3 is smart connector support. The Air 3 features a smart connector, which allows it to interface with the Apple smart keyboard, while the Mini 5 does not. But this isn't exactly surprising, given how incredibly cramped and impractical such a tiny keyboard would be. Other than a lack of smart keyboard support, the Mini 5 is essentially an iPad Air 3 that's been inconspicuously stuffed inside the body of an iPad Mini. Performance-wise, that's a very good thing, but there are some downsides as well. We'll discuss that in a bit. Just like the iPad Air 3, the iPad Mini 5 receives a substantial display upgrade. The screen now supports P3 wide color and features a brighter backlight, 500 nits versus 450 nits. Coupled with a laminated display and improved backlight, the Mini 5 features a strong anti-reflective coating with just 1.8% reflectivity. An additional commonality between the iPad Air 3 and the iPad Mini 5 is its support for True Tone, the display technology that automatically adjusts the screen's white balance to match the ambient light in your surrounding environment. Such changes make the iPad mini experience all the more enjoyable for browsing photos, reading the web, and reading books, even with light from the sun or other sources hitting your display. The A12 Bionic chip with Neural Engine, the same chip found in the current generation iPhone XS, XS Max, and XR, runs circles around the A8 chip found in the iPad mini 4. And like the iPad Air 3, the iPad mini 5 also benefits from an additional gigabyte of RAM for a total of three gigabytes. The rear-facing 8-megapixel f2.4 camera appears to be the same hardware found in the iPad Mini 4 and iPad Air 2, but the FaceTime HD camera receives a big upgrade from 1.2 megapixels to a much more usable 7 megapixels. And instead of 720p HD video recording, the new FaceTime HD camera can shoot in 1080p and benefits from the inclusion of the Retina Flash. So needless to say, this is a big upgrade over the previous generation iPad Mini anyone coming from that device who felt it was slow is going to be very impressed with the performance of the iPad Mini 5. 
But the iPad mini's biggest asset, its size, also happens to be its biggest problem. The 7.9 inch display means there's a limited amount of screen real estate to run iPad apps. For example, take Apple Pencil support. Digital artists might fire up an app like Procreate to create an illustration, but you'll be at an immediate canvas size disadvantage when compared to larger tablets like the 9.7 inch iPad, 10.5 inch iPad Air 3, 11 inch iPad Pro, or the monstrosity that is the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Other apps like Safari or Tweetbot will display less on-screen content at once on the iPad Mini 5, requiring the user to scroll in order to see what users on larger iPads can see without scrolling. And although split view slide over and picture in picture multitasking are all supported on the Mini 5, you'll probably want to use such features sparingly as they eat up precious screen real estate. The larger bezels on the iPad Mini 5 don't do the small screen any favors either. Simply put, the iPad Mini 5 looks outdated due to the large bezels especially the forehead and chin area. The design is more akin to the base $329 iPad than the iPad Air 3 in this regard. The bezels on the 2018 iPad are also large, but its larger display helps to balance out the look a bit. The iPad Mini 5 with its tiny 7.9 inch display doesn't have that luxury and sort of feels like it's drowning in bezels. On the flip side of the spectrum, having such a diminutive form factor also has its advantages. The most obvious advantage is that the iPad Mini is portable, easily fitting in areas like bags, purses, pockets, pockets even, where larger tablets may not. Another area where the mini size works to its advantage is with typing. During Fireball's John Gruber astutely noted how easy the iPad mini was to type on while holding it in your hand, and I wholeheartedly agree. It makes the iPad mini's lack of smart keyboard support less of a factor than initially imagined. It's been a while since I've regularly used an iPad mini, but after a few minutes of experiencing the fifth gen model, I was able to recall how much I enjoyed being able to quickly knock out sentences and paragraphs thanks to its miniature chassis. Coming from a larger device like the 11 inch iPad Pro where it's frustratingly difficult to type while holding the tablet, it's a really refreshing experience. Handheld typing is indeed one of the key ways that the mini form factor is better than any other iPad Apple sells today. Until Apple decides to make a folding tablet, the best you can do from a portability standpoint is the iPad mini. If portability is the most important factor in your eyes, then there's nothing more that needs to be said. The iPad mini 5 is the tablet for you. However, if portability isn't at the top of your list, then you'll need to decide between the 9.7 inch iPad and the iPad Air 3 if you wanna stay within this price range. In that case, the deciding factor should boil down to performance versus price. Although the design of the iPad mini 5 looks a bit outdated in 20. 19 is still by far the best small form factor tablet on the market. And now with the added performance of the A12 Bionic chip, it's not just portable, it's a portable powerhouse. What are your thoughts on the iPad mini 5? Do you prefer its smaller size over Apple's other tablet offerings? Sound off down below in the comments with your opinion. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And again, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.